Hey, you man, Uncle D, and in this video today, we'll be basically talking about the World Cup groups, all the problems, all the the dramas, and all the the possible scenarios that will be unraveled. Okay, um, let's just get this show on the roll real quick. As you can see, I have been here, um, you know, looking into these groups. Okay, we are at fifa.com and as you can see these are the groups A, B, C, D all the way to H and for those of you guys yeah I really know my alphabet but in this World Cup we are gonna have some great conflicts some, some real dramas some fallen heroes if you please for example in group A's the possible um, scenarios. First of all, we have Brazil, the host of the World Cup, and here we have Croatia and um, Mexico and Cameroon. Now, everyone wants Brazil to win, and for those guys who um, bet on these games, um, there will be a lot of dramas, as you can see. For example, Brazil, as usual, is always robbed in the World Cup away from home. Now, in this World Cup coming, 2014 you will notice that it's at home court so there will be a lot of psychological pressures a lot of um, you know so much pressure on the staff federations and so forth and even team players for example Neymar a young number 10 who will try to lead Brazil to victory however the team that Brazil would bring to the World Cup has a lot of weaknesses which you know I would not really want to talk about about on you know just open like this as a Brazilite and a soccer tactician you know and uh, technical aspects of the game now yes Brazil has a lot of weaknesses and if you want to say a chink in their shield you can say that now if Brazil do think that they are gonna try to go to the World Cup without let's say Ronaldinho <laughs> it would be really a pathetic joke again you know, Dunga tried it and thing didn't work as planned as you all saw in the disgraceful World Cup uh, 2010. Uh, you saw poor performance with that Brazilian team where Kaká and Rubino coordination was not so effective. Yes, they could have, they won the Confederate Cup, but the World Cup it's at a different level. And if Ronaldinho was at least playing, he could have coordinated and orchestrate uh, beautiful passes and um, create some opportunities for Rubino and Kaká who, 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 and even Fabiano but we I don't really want to just you know knock these guys you know uh, Dunga for his poor selection or his selective judgment of a good player regardless of politics in soccer if you have a good player play him let him fall or stumble but at least do not have your own ulterior motive and yes this is directly pointed towards Dunga. now we are here in 2014 as you can all see from the description below in the video what you will notice is that brazil will have a very difficult chance to win this world cup i'm a brazilianite but i am strongly telling you brazil will have to work to win this World Cup, Croatia bring to the team, um, you know, some real skill. You know, you have some real players. I've actually looked at all these groups individually and the players individually, and I must say, the underdog in this group is Croatia and Cameroon. You know, Mexico and Brazil are favorites, but the the the, the whole elements and psychology of this group is very detrimental. It's possible that Cameroon can knock out Brazil in the first first segment of this series. And Mexico and Croatia can have a problem and Cameroon goes through. Yes, it sounds odd. And the second choice upsetter could be Mexico. But Mexico has been slacking off of their ball game since lately. You know, since um, Gotemo Blanco or Otemo Blanco has not played, you've noticed a lot a little you know inconsistency inconsistency within um, the, the the playing style of Mexico Mexico had this one-two touch 
that that was so phenomenal that it gave Brazil trouble and sometimes it do you know give Brazil trouble but uh, what happens now is that things are changing now Brazil will master all areas of the game in you know, a slow ball game the technical aspects and so forth but with this young team with a young number 10 leader it can give problems and if Neymar thinks that it's just skill and flicking the ball and all this pretty stuff it's not gonna happen on this high level however you know for Neymar leading this Brazilian team as the number 10 it's very difficult I can just openly say it is very difficult yes it happened um, 1950 when um, Zizino I think um, was supposed to lead um, Brazil's team when the World Cup was held in Brazil in 1950 black and white days yeah television <laughs> black and white actually and um, Zizino was under so much pressure that he was unable to lead the team to victory and Brazil lost lost that World Cup because of a young leader and inexperience and so forth it is easy to play in confederate cups and those little leagues and yeah win the tournament and yes you're creative and yes but on a different level when the pressure comes in you 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 you, you find player crumbles for example um lionel messi in um 2010 world cup he crumbled under the pressure of leading argentina to victory as diego Amorgano thought would have happened now Cameroon comes to the table with a very unique ball game for example um, one two touches you will notice a lot of one two touches even some incredible distance shots at goal and stamina with the climate Mexico and Brazil are really in the elements of these things but you know these guys in Cameroon can bring some upsetting things to this group A Group B, <laughs> a very troublesome group. You see, Group B is so troublesome that it, it caused me to really wonder. When I really started to do my compilation of my choices or winning teams for this year World Cup, uh, some teams came to mind and one kept nudging me in the side within my dreams at night. And I'll tell you real quickly. <laughs> now who wish this which team this is the upsetter the underdog the most creative team this year in this world cup without a shut up about now we see spain we see netherlands we see chile we see australia now netherlands is known for the the these guys you know high tall guys long distance shots creative pass uh, great defense and um, strategies for for knocking you out when you least expect it great composure but not so good with their finishing uh, techniques. Now, let me get the spend tool out real quick. So what I'm saying is, um, you will have teams like Croatia and and um, and, and Netherlands. They 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 have some great things to offer to this World Cup scenario and crying and tears and so forth. Now, Chile comes with something that has never been seen in the World Cup since 1982 Brazil the immortal team that Brazil produced with Zico uh, Socrates and these other guys but what happened was that Chile has totally copied the exact ball game of this immortal Brazilian team this immortal Brazilian team in 1982 to be precise the ball game that Chile is playing is at such a high level that it can give Brazil, Italy, uh, if Italy was there, England and um, Germany, these big teams, trouble, serious trouble. Because these short guys are basically a thousand men playing against 11. When you play against Chile, you're basically playing a, a team that comprises of a thousand players versus 11. So, if you don't understand what I mean when I say a thousand men on the Chile's team, it's just that Chile's soccer team has very, very physically fit, coordinated, um, purposeful ball game. The ball does not move without a purpose. Uh, coordination, everything is precise, accurately. Sometimes they make some small errors, but the Chile's team guys will run you to the ground. 
and for, for, for a strong pick for those of you guys who are looking for an upsetter for this, this World Cup, it can be Chile. But don't be surprised that Netherlands might knock them out or Spain might knock them out because of their um, inexperience and their the, 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 the diving and the, the, the fake crying and the, the hits and the referee get them out. Because Chile, these guys are really sometimes can be hot-headed. But they are well trained and well physically fit and they will run you to the ground. Now imagine Chile playing against Germany or Brazil. These guys are so fit. So if Brazil even slow the ball down, Chile's counter-attack will punish Brazil because the Brazilian team, I can assure you, will not be as fit as the Chilean, the Chile Verde or the Chileans uh, soccer team. These guys will be physically, I can say, one of the most fittest team in this year World Cup. I mean, these guys were probably running from, <laughs> when I say fast, I literally mean these guys are fast and quick and the ball are coordinated. You will see some one, two touches that you can see flashes of Barcelona. But the, the level of one, two touches that Barcelona has is not com in comparison or comparison to that of uh, what Chile is displaying since I have been watching them from, for a few years now. Now, Australia will come to the table with tactics and great skills and physical fitness due to the heat, but their um, tragedies and attack can be flawed by means of, you know, not coordinating well with these teammates and, and so forth. I've seen many of their games and from the archives, and I can say for a fact, Australia can be an upsetter to Chile also if Chile gets carried away and get hot-headed. Spain cannot can be a, a, a top guy in this group but it's between Spain and Chile and Chile might knock Spain out and surprise the world now in group C as you can see real quickly um, Colombia Greece and CIV uh, these guys are very new they're like on the border between I think um, they're in Africa near Libria and so forth and they are really you know good but your first experience first playing you can they can surprise and knock Greece out or knock Japan out and Colombia is known for Valderrama and you know the tactics in this group might not be so surprising but you will see some beautiful ball game played by Greece and Colombia but I'm not saying anything bad about the sea IV because based on some of the games that I've analyzed and the players individually I can see where the coordination and the, the level of ball game has improved tremendously since the World Cup in 2010 in Africa where more stadiums are there and these players are now growing so don't be surprised if one of these African teams you see them in the finals for this year 2014 World Cup do not be surprised be it Cameroon, Nigeria, or Guyana. And I'm telling you, I've seen something going on in Guyana and Nigeria that I just do not really want to talk about and spoil these guys' fun. But these guys have brought some things that are very troublesome to the game under the, the FIFA World Cup. And you will see it as, as it unravel during the 2014 World Cup, which is on my, um, June 12th, yeah, my birthday at that time. At that time, I do not keep my birthday because I have too much things to do during that time. Now, let's move on real quickly to Group D. Group D, Uruguay, Costa Rica, England, and Italy. Now, England might be the favorite for this one um, in Group D. However, don't put anything past Costa Rica and Uruguay. Uruguay has some great players, and these guys uh, are known for acting and they are good with coordination and movement of the ball. Italy, those guys will get the ball into the corner and the little diving header, Scalacci type diving header, and use the 18 yard box more effectively. So do not take anything past Italy. Favorites in Group D, uh, Italy versus um, Uruguay, and the underdog Costa Rica, uh, Costa Rica can do something by not England out if England gets too cocky with too much technicalities of the game and, and positional and zoning and all that.
Costa Rica, a free agent, uh, a dark horse in Group D, can do damage to Italy and Uruguay. And favorites, you can have um, England, Uruguay, and Costa Rica can be the, the one, the dark horse, to, to, to really cause some problems and end up being the winner of that group, Costa Rica, as I can predict. But England, as I said, it all depends on how the referees go and we all know how this thing works in, in soccer. Sometimes it can be a business and sometimes it can be a betting where you know you have unscrupulous referees because of unscrupulous stuff. They will do unscrupulous things and you know get a teammate off who didn't really do anything that bad and not using the cameras to verify certain actions but just because they made the call and you know it can be politically driven not saying all referees are crooks but at times you can see some bias and some inequalities in these games now let's move on real quickly again as a Korea uh, Costa Rica can give um, Uruguay trouble if England pull their pants down <laughs> or are caught with their pants down Italy can snag this group but Costa Rica being the underdog, the underdog story, can be the winner if they really work hard. Group E, hmm, really troublesome group. As you can see, Group E can be a really, really troublesome group. Switzerland, Ecuador, France, and Honduras. The, those Honduran guys like to run, like to run like uh, the Chileans. And they are physically fit and don't be surprised, France can get knocked out of this group due to the heat and the elements of the Brazilian um, climate. Um, Switzerland um, never really look at their type of ball game and their style of ball game. But it looks interesting, it can be interesting if Switzerland put together a little surprise package for us in this group E and knock out Ecuador, you know, own goal. As I said, the pressure in these groups can be tremendously high. But as the game goes on, players get worked in and things start to get higher. But do not lose hope of Chile. Those guys will rise to the occasion. And those guys are really, really hungry to, 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 to win this thing. Honduras, France. France, I'm not so sure about their team this year. But as I say, the tactics and technical aspects of the game can be a ruling factor in Group E, where France has a lot of experience and great coaches, but Ecuadorians, being that they are near to the, the border or the equator and the climate, they can give uh, France and Switzerland a run for their money. And I strongly think you can have uh, uh, Ecuador and uh, Honduras final knockouts and then uh, be it Ecuador or Honduras one of those team might snack it, this group E from the the favorite France not putting anything fast France again everything also play the factors of those actors who act and knock out you know fall on the ground and display all these crazy stuff <laughs> if you know what I mean that are not real soccer oriented but they do it and some of the ref just give them a, I think, it accolades for their great performance with their acting. Other than, rather than giving them a red card, and you know, you know what I'm talking. You see all these dramas in this world. Group F: hmm. Argentina, Bosnia, and um, Iran and Nigeria. Now, Argentina has not been producing great ball games since. Uh, Diego Maradona. Diego Maradona came as the coach in 2010 and he was trying to do the impossible. But what he failed to do was he failed to use the right number 10 to do the right job. Messi could have performed well or better if Messi had Raquel May to assist him. Back in Europe, Messi might be God in Barcelona or so forth. But Messi is not really a number 10. Messi is genuinely not a number 10. Messi is a forward or a striker. The number 10 for Barcelona is Xavi. The playmaker, the creator, 
Messi is more an attacker of goal or striker, but that does not make him a number he can't that does not make Messi unable to aspire toward the character of a number ten. The true personality, the true roles of a number ten, and we all saw it in twenty ten where Messi failed bitterly as a number ten. The real number ten for Argentina in twenty ten was Riquelme. I don't know what went through Maradona's head. Just the same way something crappy went through the heads of the um, Dunga when he was trying to put Kaká in the number 10 for uh, Brazil. Yes, Kaká won the, the, these other leagues, but he, the, 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 the Confederate Cups and so forth. Kaká is a great player, but Kaká needed someone to create. And we saw that great weakness in Brazil in 2010. Netherlands punished them for that. If um, Ronaldinho was on the field helping, coordinating with uh, his, his, his sidekick um, Rubino and Kaká and Fabiano. Brazil would have probably won that World Cup effortlessly. I'm not saying um, Ronaldinho was was unable to perform in, in that role during the time, but we all knew that Ronaldinho could create. Likewise, Messi was unable to perform because he needed someone to feed him the ball, someone to create. Maradona should have known better. For example, with uh, himself and Kinesia. Maradona, all he had to do was give Kinesia the ball. So what would have happened was Maradona failed to see that history repeated itself. Riquelme was Maradona for Argentina in the number 10 at that moment. And Messi would have been like Kinesia running attacking the goal but difference is now Kinesia was just a runner this time Messi has more explosive skills and left cut in taking his shot and so forth and but Argentina could have snagged uh, had a piece of that 2010 World Cup but poor performance of Messi poor leadership role of Messi many of you guys will hate me for saying all these things but it's the truth and down hands down and you all know it now here we have these teams I'm not saying Messi might not be able to lead, but Messi has been a poor performer for country on this grand stage. And we need a number 10 who can lead Argentina. Argentina is one of my team back in the days, in the 86 and so forth. You know, Iran can come and upset all these guys. But Nigeria, mm -mm -mm. has nothing to do with race has nothing to do with that but Nigeria has been playing this unusual ball game that they will destroy you in slow motion on the lines or in the corners and any amount of space those guys get they will punish you with it worst of all our greatest of all so to speak they have um, new stadiums in their countries from the last 2010 World Cup so they can all train and get their skills up to a higher level rather than playing on those little farm fields that they used to play on they now have access to some of the, the real cool stadiums that thanks to the 2010 World Cup now be not fooled by these Iranians these boys will run you to the ground now Argentina will come with the technicalities and the tactics and positional ball game However, sometimes on the soccer field, the player who wants to win the most with the biggest heart can win. And the players who are just lucky. Bosnia can come up and upset all these three guys and take it from for Group F. Sorry about that. Now, what will happen is, if we are not paying attention you will notice that Nigeria will sneak up and we'll have a Nigeria Chile final or a Nigeria Germany final. Now here we are moving up to this group, Group G, real quickly. Germany, Portugal, Guyana and US of A. Boys, red, white and blue. Those boys in red, white and blue. Now Germany, the height, the land of the giants, they will have as usual tall players to head the ball in and strong players to take free kicks from outside of the 18 and you know these guys will create a lot of problems for players Portugal tactics and you know smart diving and the faking and the Cristiano Ronaldo thing I think 
you know these guys might be just the actors Diana now these guys are in the Sun children of the Sun if you want to call them and um, they are already conditioned towards dealing with the atmosphere that the Sun will produce in in um, Brazil now they have great feels now they have a very unique style of ball movement with some of those great coaches over there getting these guys up you see these guys bodies are already built to take pain and threshold and the heat and all that wonderful stuff and they will bring to the table a very very good game for this group you will see some really funny stuff happening now the US of A here you go yeah the Patriots if you please coached by Klinsman these guys will have some problems to work out and try to solve but as we, they are as you all know they were fighters and they will do better than 2010 but my concern is with the USA team is just that um, many USA um, coaches will be attacking Klinsman yes because Klinsman is German and he is a part of the, the German Federation and there are certain tactics and things of technicalities that the Germans use within their ball game that many other countries normally overlook and German ball game is more on tactics and position and ball flowing distance and height and all these factors now Germany can snag this group if Diana is for caught sleeping but do not be fooled that USA will not put up a fight remember they are coached by the German um, um, goal hungry Klinsman <laughs> I put in one for you my man <laughs> so but what I do not want is that the American people during this moment in time get pissed at Klinsman if anything happened that they are not pleased and they're gonna say you know things go not as planned and in soccer oftentimes and then the people who does not really understand soccer Klinsman might have trained these guys really well but these guys who we have on the field might not be able to perform to their expectations so what will happen is you will see a different ball game from what they were trained for now I'm not saying that these guys who we are put forward on the field are not the ones who should be there but I can strongly say there are many other in the MLS's in the USA that should have been on this team but because of politics because of Hollywood in soccer you will have talented players not getting the opportunities that they deserve however Klinsman tried to fix that and we must applaud him for all of his efforts now our boys will have to work and those who are old legs and more experienced sometimes you will have to change them for the guys with newer mindset with the fighting heart of the red white and blue so Germany can snag this group the USA will have to work if Germany is caught with their pants down Diana will snag it now if Diana and Germany goes through a fight and fail USA can come out of this group and win it and I will be happy for whoever wins regardless of country or creed <laughs> or constitution I strongly want to see the team that plays the best and play their heart out to win whatsoever is it is that they deserve Germany can stand this group however if Germany is caught sleeping Guyana can win Spain I'm not so sure but things can go goes in any favor as I said any team is caught sleeping USA can snag it Portugal we just have to watch those actors and get get players out with red cards and just to say again my bet for this group uh, if Guyana versus Chile it's gonna be hard but Guyanans will slow the Chileans down with their slow pace and just you will see some things that I'm talking about in that World Cup
coming 2014, which is on my birthday, June 12th. <laughs> now, Group H and final real quick. Uh, Belgium, Algeria, Russia, and Korea Republic. Korea Republic is a very patient team. They will slow the ball game down and take you out of your technicalities. And that's very important for what I just said. You know, there are the teams who have all the knowledge and all the, the know-hows of what to do in certain areas and position. But if, if you play uh, Korea, Korea will slow the ball game down so dead that it's boring. And they will suck you into their little crazy uh, aura where the balls just start moving real fast and then you are caught off guard in counter attacks and in attacks and trust me you will see what I'm talking about in group H now Russia the Russians are like giants as usual they are tactical you know chess players brilliant in thinking and planning but some execution on the soccer field might not work in their favor due to the nature of the climate, the angles, and the planning. Mental-wise, Russians will outthink their, their opponents and probably put the balls in the right position. Now, mentally fit, meaning that they can be mentally and physically fit and fast also. However, again, let's go up. Uh, Algeria. Algeria can give uh, trouble in this group H. They can snag it from Belgium. Algeria can be the, the one to win this with Korea Republican semifinals or finals for this group and or knockout for this group to, to make it to the knockout round if you please. But Al, Al, Algeria, these guys are runners and these guys are are in it to win. Again I say Korea, these guys are martial artists, Tai Chi you know, you will see some beautiful shots of goal, and you will see some things in this group, Group H. Overall, my picks for this World Cup winning team, as usual, yeah, you have Germany, you have, um, I will have Nigeria, and I will have um, Chile as my top favorite to, to win this thing, and um, Brazil... Uh, <laughs> second third because brazil is just gonna just disappoint us i'm telling you it, unless ronaldinho is there helping them they have a stronger choice with just Ronald, with just neymar it's gonna be like sending kaka and um rubino and these other guys to the world cup without someone to coordinate and let the ball game flow ronaldinho will, will be a great instrument in that world cup team however as we all know, scenarios and storylines and all these things always happen in these workups. My my thing is that Brazil will let everyone think Neymar will be the number ten, and when the time comes for like in early May or in April, we start to hear that Ronaldinho will be on the squad because you see the players are in Europe and many of these players are playing in other leagues and they can get hurt or injured during that time right and then Neymar might get hurt and he's not able to be an instrument in the Brazilian team and then we'll have to call up some other players from to, to be for example number 10 so right now Neymar the youngster is playing the role as the number 10 for Brazil and then we will hear all of a sudden Ronaldinho will be the number 10 for <laughs> for Brazil and then the whole world all these other teams will call shock but there will still be this this ghost hanging over Brazil this ghost of 1950 Chile will be a strong force to reckon with and again Iran Nigeria Al uh, Algeria can be teams Honduras can be a powerful team to, 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 to play with. A Uruguay normally comes good, but you know, sometimes die out in the end, right? But teams to watch Cameroon, Chile, Germany, 
the C the C I V can be good if they don't slack off. England as usual with a lot of technicalities can be knocked out by Italy and Uruguay and Costa Rica will fight for this group and Costa Rica again I'm not saying Costa Rica might be the great team for this group but because of the psychology of the underdog syndrome they can come up and snag this from the guys who we are thinking will be the favorite however Italy again a lot of acting will be going on but we just have to watch France can pull through this group but Honduras can put up a fight Ecuador and Honduras can snag this group and we have a battle for this group between Ecuador and Honduras Argentina not so sure Nigeria and Iran can be the strong force in this group F to, to shake up the soccer world if Nigeria slacks off and, and Iran slacks off Argentina and Bosnia might have put up a fight but do not be caught with your pants down Nigeria like you always do in World Cups Germany Portugal the fight Guyana this is a tough year era group group G and USA those boys will have to put up a real hard fight against the tacticians but Klinsman will prepare the US team for things to expect but as again if US face off with Chile it's gonna be it's just detrimental unless the USA slow the ball game down real slow till Chile just their speed is unaccounted for you know I'm not just telling you how to beat Chile but someone needs to slow the game down and the Chileans will always be running so if the US team is not that fit they will be left in this dust of the Chileans my favorite again Chile Germany and yes Brazil and let's say Iran and Honduras those are my pick for this year World Cup guys tell me what you think tell me if I made a, a fool of myself on my analysis again the date on the video is 2014 March 12th thank you very much guys and hope and trust this analysis helps put in the description below whether you're watching it on YouTube or SoccerNumber10.com what you think and who you think will be the winner. Thank you very much. Bye for now.